All right, I'm on the back finally doing some battens. I laid the top near the soffit trim and I got the bottom stuff too down here. And at first I was trying to space them evenly, but then I decided just to go with how they used to do it in the, uh, the old days. These things are intended to just cover the gaps, the vertical siding. So I'm just uh, placing the board right in the middle of the seam and then I just make sure it's level and go up with it. And, you know, to the naked eye, it looks pretty even. So we'll probably end up, uh, can't even tell anyway. But I'm just doing it in, uh, in the spirit of the style shed that we're going with here. So that's it. We got a little assembly line here. I'm putting up the, the battens and my father-in-law, Rich, is missing. It's supposed to be right there. Maybe he's getting a drink. But he's been cutting the battens on the saw and we're helping each other out. It's great. Well, by the time I got one up, he's got the next one cut. We gotta cut both ends. So he's just knocking them out, handing them over to me. So, <clears throat> getting excited to be done here because it's a messy work site here. And that's it. So remember, those battens, those are two and a half inches and they actually came from scrap pieces of the siding. The siding is eight inches and some pieces were like 12 inches, 13 inches, the slabs. So I had like a good four inches of spare. So I, I, we came and just sent them through the table saw and then the rest of them here is what we're going to be using for the fire pit. We throw them in and enjoy a fire kind of on a nightly basis. Papa, anything to add? What do you got? What are you eating, peanuts? Peanuts are gone. Uh, no, we got five pounds of peanuts. Yeah, we got a lot of peanuts to eat tonight. The dogs can help. This weekend, I'm really lucky because I get to spend it with my mommy. <laughs> Hi. And it's Mother's Day weekend. And guess what we're gonna do? We're going to plant the garden. When I was, what do you think it was? About 10, mom, we planted a garden? Yes. Haven't done it since then. So this ought to be interesting. We're trying to come up with a plan of attack at this point. The seeds are looking good, or the seedlings are, um, what would these be called, Mom? Yeah, seedlings, seedlings? Or little sprouts? sprouts. These are ones that were replanted because the frost got them. But things are looking good. We gotta get them in the ground, it's time. Part of our plan is to make labels because once we start planting things, we're not gonna know what's what and that wouldn't be good. So I'm up at the sawmill here trying to go through our pile of scrap wood to find ones that I can cut down for labels. You gonna help me, Carmen?
You guys made lightsabers with the yeah. netting? Mom's ready to go. So we'll call this the beginning shot. Nothing's planted yet. We just got dirt and John fertilized. What's up, senoritas? Hey! Look! It's starting to look like something! <laughs> Do we have too much space? No, not enough. Oh. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, it's gonna be tight. Ladies and gents, this is Mama Sue. Hi! Hi! Mama Sue, she's the master gardener. Well, in our world anyway, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, look at these cool stakes that Sue wrote out for us. This is kale. Hey, there we go. There's kale. This guy is arugula, spinach, lettuce, Swiss chard, carrot, celery. This is cool. We're getting our rows together. Yep. Yeah. See, this is the main row. Mom and I are already using it. Yeah. And this is a row. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me see. So where's the door going to be? Over there. All right. So we got some fencing to keep our four-legged friends out. Not Maddie and Carmen. We Just got to keep them out too, though. Yeah, our... probably a good idea. There we go. Those four-legged friends. Can you see that? I mean, I got plenty of grass here for them to eat. I don't want them eating my hard harder and the plants from seeds. Do you want a tour? I would love a tour, Meg. So wait, that's that's the plan. We're gonna Meg is demanding I make steaks today. I'm gonna put steaks in the ground. She requested a, a cool two dozen strong, right? At least, yeah. And uh, we're gonna put steaks up, just pound them in the ground and we're gonna hang up that wildlife netting so the deer can't get in and uh, We'll just keep a lookout. I do have to tell you though, Meg. Yeah. Up there, I saw a bunny. Right oh. there. Yeah. Wow, the, the shed looks cool from here. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. And what's neat about our garden is right there over Meg's shoulder by the um, dirt there, right there is the spring. So we could put a pump in there and irrigate this whole garden from uh, natural spring water. Are we doing that? We should. Okay. Well, do you want a tour? I do. Come with me to the garden. This is the back section of the garden. The third section here. And here we're going to have all of the vines and tall plants. Okay. So we're going to have our corn and okra. We asked Google. Google said okra goes three to six feet. So we're giving it plenty of room. Okay. And all of our viney plants like melons and pumpkins stuff like that is going to be over here and the things that grow on like a trellis mm -hmm. are on the back wall there like peas mm -hmm. and beans and mom said that her spaghetti squash grew well on a trellis type thing last time she okay. had it and then this is section two of the garden okay. and this section is going to be the medium-sized plants 
such as collards and peppers and tomatoes and things like that are going to be in this section. And then the first section is going to be all rows and these are all the, the short things. Oh, they go that way. Yeah. The, the rows they are going to go, go north, that way? North-south, so they get as much sun okay. as they need. All right, glad we got our master gardener here. Right, Mama Sue? Yeah, that's right. All right. <laughs> and this is the main path. Mom and I are already using it like we're fenced in. Yep. I could get you some flat slate rocks if you need it. That'd be cool. Oh, that would be cool. Just that to kind of like, as a visual aid for walking around in the garden. Yeah, and then weeds wouldn't grow up in it. Right. Looks good, right? Does look good. Good work, girls. Good start. I'm looking forward to this lettuce. Mm -mm. Let me taste it. Let me taste it. Hot damn. Mm. Oh, and then somewhere, wherever there's room, we're going to have a little section that is uh, mystery plants because some of my labels didn't work, so I don't know what's growing. We'll call it the rave. <laughs> the rave. Yeah. <laughs> the rave section of the garden is located here. <laughs> Raves and natives. Could be a weed, could be a seed. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great quote. <laughs> could be a weed, could be a seed. <laughs> yeah. All right. Is there enough fertilizer down? We'll find out. All right. I guess you could just sprinkle it once you're done planting, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, ladies. Good not. job. Now that we get the garden going, we shall be great. Great little distraction to take a break, take care of some plants and whatnot. I'm making fence posts. I'm just driving them into the ground. I can't put them in blunt. I gotta make tips on them. I was doing it with a chainsaw, but my goodness, it's just difficult to get a good point on it. And it seems like it takes forever to cut it with a chainsaw. 
I just sharpened the blade, thought that might be it, but now I got it over on the miter, miter saw here, and uh, I got a whole stack of them on the, uh, on the tractor here that I need to cut. I'm going to get to it. All right, so that worked well doing the stakes on the miter saw. Wish I tried that method first instead of last, so it have saved a lot of time. Tried the chainsaw, had to sharpen the blade first, so I kind of like, I lost a good half hour today so far. That's nice and cool out, would be able to get this done. All right, so I've been driving that RK24 now for about 240 hours I have on that machine. And I gotta say that I just want to reiterate that grapple bucket on the RK24. Um, that grapple bucket's from Titan Attachments. Hooks right in, it's great. Uh, I think it works really well if you're using the backhoe on the back of the tractor. Is that back, the backhoe's a good 900 pounds, okay? That thing's a good 450 pounds, so, but uh, what I'm trying to say, you gotta even it out. It's, it's dangerous to drive that tractor without something heavy in the back with that grapple bucket on the front. So unless you have some flat land, you have some flat, you know, farmland or something like that, and you're moving some logs around, whatever, cool. But if you go down any grade or up and down hills or slight on an angle, it's, you gotta be super, super careful. I feel very experienced now with that thing, and I know where I can take it and where I can't. Uh, I would not chance it. That thing will tip over the tractor. So just caution, okay? Just trying to look out for you guys. Anyway, we got our uh, got our posts here. Cut them. Look at this nice one. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, poplar posts. It's probably only going to be a season or two until we get up to the house. We'll do something more permanent next year or the year after. I don't know. It's gonna work though. So we got these like nine foot posts. I'm gonna put them into the ground about 12 inches just with a sledgehammer and a level. And uh, yeah, let's work up a sweat, get these done. I got four in the ground so far. I'm spacing them, I don't know, 10 feet apart or so. And then we're gonna put up some wildlife netting. So I'll stop yapping, let's get to it. Like 40 by 20. I thought it was like 60. Oh yeah, you're right, you're right. 
It's 60 by 20. Okay. This is my high tech door. I tie this little string in a knot in a, in a bow. Uh huh. And it goes like this. Very nice. You want to come in? Yeah, I'll come in. No Maddie's. Maddie's sick. This area right here mm -hmm. is the mystery planting area. <laughs> Okay. Labels came off of some of the cups. I don't know what is planted there. So we'll find <laughs> out. Out. Out, Carmen. I'm sorry, you're cute, but you got to stay out. That's not going to stop her. They're going to want to come in. Okay, sorry. So we have rows going this way. North to south. Okay. These are the low growing things. I said this in the other video, so. Everything's planted now. Good. Looks very nice. I love the little sticks. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come back and do them with a darker pen somehow. I hope the uh, hope a few of these bounce. Like those don't look terribly healthy. Are they supposed to have purple leaves like that? Or I don't know. These it's are the lettuce. Color, so, yeah. Down there, they look really good. Over there. <laughs> Fine, you can come in, but stay. You stay right there. Okay. Over here is broccoli, cauliflower. There's scallions. We got beets. Let me see. Those are scallions. Those are beets. That's this radish up there. Celery's over there. Cool. This is red onion and yellow onion. Yep. No sign of those yet, but I. They probably pop up quick. Yep. Bush beans. This is eggplant, bush beans, tomatoes. Then over here we have another row of tomatoes and then potatoes. Okay. This is summer squash, zucchini. Here we have collards, carrots, and peppers. The peppers got mixed up, so we'll see what comes up. <laughs> okay. There's banana, there's green pepper, and there's oh, right. jalapeno. So oh, you could tell the difference between all of them. I think we probably can. And then over here, I had some to replant zoops. some things because they got bit by the frost and they're not ready to plant yet, but they're gonna go here. Cantaloupe, watermelon, honeydew. Apparently the property before us, well, the family that lived here a long time ago, had very good success with melons on this property. Oh really, I mm -hmm. didn't know that. Carmen. Carmen, Carmen. Hey, you stay on the path, okay? Carmen. Okay, good girl. Okay. And over there we have okra, and we have one row of cucumber. I have more cucumber that's gonna be planted. Good, to make pickles. And then over here we have butternut squash. Mm -hmm. We have one row of corn. We have more corn coming. Yeah, I love corn. And then these are peas. Those are doing exceptional. Yeah, they're really healthy. And this is spaghetti squash and pumpkin. And there's more of those coming. So, All right. It's yeah. an early garden. And but we it's... put up this fencing material. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see it on film. It's really thin plastic mesh and you can barely see it so that's why we put these flags on it to kind of help the birds not run into it yeah i saw some butterflies get stuck and then they they kind of they go up and they get mm -hmm. out all right we've got a center aisle here I think the dogs figured out. Hey, i'm gonna i'm gonna get some uh what do you call it some not shit slate i'm gonna get some bluestone some slate and put it down in the pathways here. Should I do that or not? That'd make it a pain to till it next year. All right. It's fine on me. Good job, Meg.
seven and a half ish. And probably this side. All right, so I am out here trying to make siding for the cupola. So on the cupola, I'm gonna have board and batten on the bottom, and then I'm gonna have siding on the top. So if you have the cupola, you're looking at the front of it. Here's the roof, okay? I'm gonna have this section here. There's, there's three sections, really. There's the base, okay? That's gonna be board and batten. And then this section here, we're gonna have horizontal siding. And then I'm gonna do something decorative up here. So this is just kind of like lap siding. I was gonna do like nickel gap or, or ship lap, whatever you wanna call it. I was gonna do that here, but I was having a dado bit problem on the saw, so I figured I could just do lap siding. Which means just the siding that, you know, you start from the bottom and you overlap them like shingles. So I'm gonna do that up there. So I'm gonna cut these. And uh, what they're gonna be about four inches tall, or four inches wide, I'm sorry and they'll stack on top of each other. So the, the shingles I need only have to be a little bit over two feet. And this log here I got is 112-ish, over nine feet. So I'll be able to cut a few pieces and then cut them down to size, get multiple, multiple side, lap siding pieces out of a single, a single cut here. So I'll probably only need like maybe four passes over everything. But, all right, so after I make this four inch cut here, I'm gonna turn it upright, watch what I do after that. I've never done this, but I think it's a good plan. Let's see how it works. So now I'm gonna prop up one side. Um, how am I gonna do this? I got it. So basically, I want a wedge now. I'm going to want this to come down like 7 sixteenths and this to come down a full inch. So you have this like that type of shape. Wow, that was pretty good. Ha! Huh. So I'm, that means I have to prop up this size, half of this distance. Um, so I'll, I'll prop it up 7 sixteenths on this side. I got to find something that's 7 sixteenths ish. Let's just space it across these two. Uh, yeah, that looks good to me. I'm gonna run with that. And the further in you go, the more spacing you're gonna get. All right, let's put that against the back wall. Let's put this spacer right on the outside edge. And let's cut it, see what happens. Should I clamp it down? doing something funky. Never did this before. All right. That's pretty secure. Let's try it. So here's what we're doing, folks. 
flashing. Hold on, hold on. I think it's 10 inch flashing. All right, yeah. what are we doing, John? 10 inch aluminum flashing. So we were up there. We're up, up on the cupola trying to flash this. Just, uh, we'd call it freestyle maybe. So we got up there and tried doing it by hand and that's what came out. And then we came down here and used a couple boards and clamping the seam. And now we got a nice kind of smooth seam. We have a few buckles, but it's just for the water entry points for where the cupola, the top section goes over the um, bottom section. We're just trying to prevent that water from entering the shed. John? Yeah. I'm sorry I made you do a cupola. That's okay. It's a lot of trim work. It's like, you, you, it's just like the shed itself. You frame it and then it's a really, you have a ton of trim work to do. A really small shed. Yeah. No, it's cool though. It, um, it's, a, it's a lot of detail. It'll, it'll look nice. Especially all painted and we're gonna do, so we're gonna do the shed white. It has a dark gray roof and we're gonna have accents of like a, kind of like a walnut type stain, but it's gonna be the poplar that we're staining. So we're gonna, other things to come, we're doing a little pergola over the garage door. We gotta make the garage door, we gotta hang the front door, we gotta finish up all the trim on the outside, install the roof. If you like what we're doing, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We are doing everything we can. We're owner builders and we just want the experience. We're doing this for the adventure. So if you like our work ethic and the product that you know we're doing here, we are going to build an entire house. So this we consider is just a little practice. bit of practice. <laughs> huh? It's just practice. Yeah. Maddie? My high-tech door. How do you like the garden? Oh, are you upset you can't get in? Poor Maddie. Come on, go. Here, give me that. Oh, okay. Whoa there, Gimbal. Easy, easy. Okay. Thanks, mad at me. See that look? It's the look of anger. Mm, the dark side is strong with you. I'm like a squirrel up here now. 